Welcome, everyone, to The Nest, where today we're going to discuss how we can manage our digestive issues naturally. As you know, every week, every Thursday, I provide a Therapeutic Thursday webinar where we here are here in our virtual classroom, and we share ways to heal from ailments uh, all across the body, the mind, and our emotions. Uh, I am Rhonda, Rhonda Hemphill, and I am the wellness partner. I've spent the last 15 years teaching docs, nurses, and techs about heart function and dysfunction, different treatments, and offering them procedural navigation. I recently left that job to begin teaching the public about healing ourselves because of my discontent with corporate America. For those of you who are not aware, some time ago there was a big shift in the uh, medical community's way of looking at patients as they came into the hospital. And one way that we look at patients is as customers. And understanding that the business of healing people, or should I say the medical industry business, not the business of healing, but the medical industry has um, looked at those that come through the hospital doors as customers for quite some time. And for every business, you want loyal customers. And for someone who comes into the hospital sick to remain a loyal customer, they must remain sick. So let's just think about that as we go through the rest of the presentation because that is the background that I come from, from teaching in the medical industry. And, again, being um, morally conflicted doing that job, I have had to teach what I have learned along my journey. My journey uh, with health started um, with myself, healing myself from a breast cancer scare. Um, going on a fast, very strict fast, and shrinking the tumors between the time that the, my OBGYN found them and the time that I was supposed to have surgery, they were gone. I can tell, tell you guys more about that at a later time, but I most of all would like to share my, my story with uh, my son with you guys because this is a digestive uh, uh, disorder conference, so I'd like to share that with you guys. My son uh, had a Crohn's back in 2014. He was diagnosed early in the year, February, March time frame. Over the course of the year, uh, between that time and August, he was in the hospital over seven months, had four surgeries and long list of things that went on before we were able to halt all of that. My son had a massive infection that, Caused his uh, was caused by his intestines actually bursting because of the Crohn's, and by the time they actually figured out what was wrong with him, it was it was ugly. So he had to have uh, part of his colon dissected. And when they were looking for what uh, to diagnose him with, they did what they call an upper and lower GI scope, which is when they take a camera down your throat to look at your esophagus, your stomach, and your small intestines. Then they take another camera and they go up the anus and they look at your colon to see where specifically the Crohn's is and what the status of it is. And so for those, he had lesions in his esophagus and his stomach and his small intestine and um, in the cecum of his um, colon. And that's actually where it actually uh, ruptured just a little higher than the cecum. And I'll show you guys what that is later. Nonetheless, um, after all those surgeries, he still had the lesions in his stomach and small intestines and all of that. But after giving him specific herbs that I had, I'm going to meet you guys. If you need to speak, you can hit star six. Um, after getting the herbs on board and the essential oils on board and 
going back later after he had decided that he was no longer going to be sick and he was going to deal with the emotions associated with this, he actually got better. And as of right now, as the last time we went to the doctor and got his blood work done, he has no evidence of Crohn's. So with that, that kind of changed my whole look at what I've been doing because I had been dealing with natural health on my own for a long time. But once my son was impacted and I saw that I really need to share this information, I decided to uh, do what I'm doing here today, which is share this information with all of you. Uh, again, I've been a physician educator and uh, turned that into wellness coaching for individuals. I can do uh, wellness plans for you, and the gold package actually includes for those who want to actually reverse disease or come off of their medication. That plan actually includes me going to the doctor with you, working with your doctor to help you get off uh, your medications, including going home with you, doing a pantry makeover, and a healthy shopping trip just to get you on, get you started, get you on board as to whatever your goals are. I offer uh, herbal and therapeutic essential oil. I offer alternative women's products because I am so passionate about my my sister girl all coming together and healing from the diseases that we deal with uh, due to lack of knowledge. And uh, so I offer products for that. And, of course, here we have the nest, and you all are joining me. So, again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Every week at this time we are sharing information on healing different uh, systems of the body. Again, this, this week, I'm sorry, this month, we're actually dealing with digestive issues. And today, our agenda is as such, fourfold health. I want to share with you guys what fourfold health is. Then we'll go into how does the body heal. I'll share with you the uh, thing that allopathic medicine is missing, the metaphysics of disease, and how disease is more than just what happens to your body. We'll discuss what is disease, actually, and then how is it treated when you go to the doctor? What do they do for it? And then we'll look at supporting the body or supporting the system or supporting you versus treating you with the medication or such. And then we'll look at a Q&A session where you guys will have an opportunity to share your thoughts and questions. So please have a sheet of paper with you, and if you have any questions, please write them down. And do not hesitate to join the call. This is a virtual classroom, so everyone's opinions matter and are very much appreciated if you share. So first, what is fourfold health? And before I get started, I just want to know, is, are there any questions? All right. Is everyone also online and can see the actual slide? Yes. Yes, yes, I am. Okay. All right. So I'm going to mute you guys again. Okay, great. So what is fourfold health? Well, first of all, most of us understand that our bodies, we come here, we're not just our bodies. We are soul or spirit or our true self lives within this body. And we can liken that to us driving a car. When you are driving down the street and, let's say, a red little Honda cuts you off. You say, hey, that Honda cut me off. As opposed to saying, Sharon, who's the person driving the car, actually cut you off. Because you're identifying yourself or that person with their car. So the same is, is true for our bodies. They are our vehicle. Our minds are our communication system. They allow our spirit or our true self to communicate with the, with the earth around us. So it's just a way for us to make sense of what we're seeing, just a communication device. Our emotions are actually the gauges to our car. They tell us when things are good for us or bad for us. Should I slow down? Should I speed up? Maybe I should turn around the other way because things aren't, uh, it's, a, it's a traffic jam up ahead. 
So understanding that principle of fourfold health and understanding all of those parts of what we call the human being, when we look at health, we have to then look at health in all four of those places. So as we move along, oh, I'm sorry, guys. As we move on, I want to go into how does the body heal? Well, to understand how the body heals, we first have to understand what cells are. And they're like our building blocks of life because every tissue, every cell inside, I'm sorry, every organ in the body is made up of cells. We remember that from biology. We understand that from the simplest two cells in which we all are created, the sperm and egg, as they come together and the egg begins to multiply. We are still just a multiplication of cells. So then we can say if we're just uh, basically a multitude of cells, we can say that if our cells are healthy, then we're healthy. So you'll hear me talk quite a bit about them. The body has a divine technology. It is what every technology on this planet is built from. Every bit of technology is copying what our bodies can already do. It has an inherent natural ability to heal itself. And that healing happens either through growth or foregrowth or for repair of the cells because they become damaged, or for replacement when a cell reaches maturity, it then replicates itself, single cell replication, and becomes a new cell. There's a myth that the body is new every seven to ten years. Well, it's some truth to it, not quite every seven to ten years. But each organ has a specific time frame for which it lives. So we can look at the psychic cells, for instance, and know that they live for 48 hours before they're replaced with a new cell. And if you see the diagram to the right, you can see how it's an original cell. It decides it's going to uh, replicate itself. It, is, it organizes its DNA into two and then splits, and then there's a new cell. Sperm cells last two to three days. Colon cells can last up to three days. Platelets last 10. Red blood cells last about four months. White blood cells last about a year. Bone, about 25 years. And uh, the jury's still out on this whole brain cell thing. They don't think that they're replaced, but I disagree. Um, I just don't have any evidence of it yet. So that's only my opinion. So I have only written on here what is uh, fact at this moment. But what is fact is that the body does have an innate ability to heal. When you cut yourself, what happens? You bleed. And then after you bleed, what happens? A scab forms. You don't have to tell your body, hey, start bleeding and make a scab. No, it does it all by itself. So why wouldn't your body be able to heal from anything else when we were made this way? So first of all, let's look at these cells because if that's all we are, Our main goal for health should be to protect our cell. There are three major components of a cell. You guys remember this from biology? That's an animal cell up there in the corner. Yeah, with ribosomes, mitochondria, cytoplasm, all that good stuff. The three parts that you need to remember, though, are the cell membrane. That's like our security system. That's our ADT. Then there's the nucleus. That's the brain. It actually holds our DNA information, which is the most valuable thing inside of a cell because without that valuable DNA information, the cell can't replicate properly. Next is the mitochondria, and that's the energy converter. It takes the food and nutrients that we eat that go through our digestive tract, through our blood system, to all our cells all over our body, and it changes those nutrients into energy. So... Those are the three most important parts of the cell. So those are really the most three and most important parts of us. So if we give ourselves proper nutrition, then that influences the cell to have proper structure, proper functioning, and maintains the integrity of the cell. So the most important role for that cell is to keep the DNA safe. 
again, so that it has the right information so that it can replicate cor- correctly. It also need, we also need energy. So, again, we need to keep our DNA and our cells safe, but how do we do that? Well, research shows that a poor diet that doesn't have a lot of antioxidants and other phytonutrients, those you get from fruits and vegetables. And those that have environmental exposures to, like, free radicals, those are environmental toxins like pesticides and things that are on your fruits and vegetables or uh, things like that. Then our DNA can become damaged. And when our DNA is damaged, it can't reproduce correctly. So then when those cells reproduce, they're mutated or tumor or cancer or diabetes or whatever disease they morph into because those cells are no longer able to do their job as they uh, are, are supposed to. So then... In order to be healthy and have healthy cells, we have to take in a range of vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, antioxidants, good fat, good protein, just to keep our DNA free from uh, free radicals. So just to keep our DNA safe, keep that cell membrane nice and fortified so that our DNA stays protected. What's a free radical, guys? That's all this stuff on the left the ultraviolet rays, the pollution from factories and from our cars, the stress from work and expectations and responsibilities of life. And also when we have to hurry up and grab something on the way home and we stop and pick up something we know we shouldn't eat. These are free radicals and they break down our cell membrane. And if our cell membranes are broken, then our DNA becomes exposed. If your DNA is exposed, you can get sick. Just that simple. But thank God for the immune system. It guards us against bacteria, viruses, and other junk that just may be harmful to us. The immune system and or called the lymphatic system, they are one and the same. It includes the lymph nodes, the thymus gland, the spleen, bone marrow, and lymphocytes. That includes T-cells. You've heard of T-cells when they talk about people with HIV and AIDS, not having T-cells or low T-cells. And also our white blood cells are a part of our uh, immune system. What do they do? The system works with our blood system. And its main job is to take lymph, which is the fluid that the uh, lymph nodes actually make, and it takes this clear fluid through the system and it kind of just kicks out everybody that doesn't need to be there. So all those free radicals that are in there trying to beat up on our cells, the, the immune system kicks them out. As they do that, then that dirty fluid is just dumped back into our uh, blood system, and then it goes through our kidneys to be filtered out and out our urine. So you can see how um, everything's connected, the lymph system and the blood system and the urinary system all work together just to clean our system out. That's why it's important that we drink water to make sure that all these systems can work fluidly together. Okay, still uh, tackling this question. What is disease? I pull up from Louise Hayes and Lizzie Bourbeau because both of them teach the metaphysics of disease. And what is that? It's that every body part tells us a different story. We just went through a Thanksgiving meditation, giving thanks to every part of our body. And I noted some key things that we were thankful for from each one of those parts of our body. One was the knees and how they offer flexibility. And that's, you know, it's common sense. We can look at ourselves and say, hey, yeah, my knees are flexible. Or if someone is dealing with some arthritis and they can no longer bend their knees, that's not so easy for them. And so there's a lack of flexibility in their life. But okay, hold on, hold on. I think I'm going too far. Let's back up, back up. We're talking about the root cause of disease. So let me give you something that make a little more sense and are a little easier to grab hold of. Most people can't understand if someone has a stomach ulcer. 
that they really worry too much and that that worrying has kind of ate away at their stomach. Like whatever it is is bothering them, eats away at their stomach, giving them an ulcer. And then we can look at high blood pressure and say, well, Grandma used to always say, don't stress me out because you're going to make my blood pressure go up. So that must mean that stress and blood pressure are the cause and effects or two related uh, things. So we can see that stress causes high blood pressure. Why can't we see that other uh, diseases would also be caused by something from inside or something from within? This image on the right actually gives you a deeper understanding of that. These are the energetic bodies that are associated with our endocrine system. They allow us to be able to communicate our energy, our vibe, to and from one another. I will go through them quickly. The root chakra, the sacral chakra, the uh, solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, third eye chakra, and the crown chakra. I'm going to start at the heart. We all know that the symbol of a heart is a symbol for love. So most people get that the heart chakra is our love chakra. And then the thyroid or the throat chakra is right over our vocal cords. So we can get that that's a communication center energetically. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with what a chakra is, I'm just going to go a little deeper and help you understand that these energy centers actually tell us how we're doing as we relate to our lives. The root chakra gives us and tells us about our vitality, our need for survival and self-preservation, tells us if we're grounded in family and if we're secure or if we're not. And if we're not secure, dealing with issues with security or maybe going from house to house and things of that nature, there's a root chakra imbalance, and that needs uh, attention. I'll go up to the heart chakra, and you can see that the theme of this energy is love and acceptance of both yourself and others, where all of our emotions kind of start. And this is where we show compassion and forgiveness for ourselves and for others. And someone who maybe has a hard time with doing these things may have some type of blockage there. Same with the throat. So I'll move on. That was just a brief introduction. Now let's dig a little deeper into how does disease have, what are the root causes of disease? Especially looking at digestive issues. Well, our digestive system is really surrounded around our emotions, just like our heart is. It's almost like our second heart. Issues in this area are anything from stomach ulcers to constipation, diarrhea, inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. So how do we heal? There are several types of healing. Again, going back to the fourfold health that I gave you guys a little while ago, the physical, mental, and emotional, spiritual man or woman, we would have to heal on all four levels to really get this. A lot of times people are sick and dealing with disease and they think they beat it and then it comes back because they haven't went through the whole foundation to dig the whole thing up. So the physical aspect of healing involves specific foods, specific herbs, specific essential oils, and specific cleansing techniques. 
for the body. Then for the mind, sometimes we have to reprogram our thinking to help us expand our perspective over whatever is going on, whatever that root cause of our disease is. We heal emotionally by releasing the past and some karmic cleansing. And then we heal our spiritual connection with specific meditations, prayers, and or rituals. That's done. And we also offer other natural health practitioners that can expand upon this, like acupuncturists that will expand upon that physical and uh, that physical um, relief. We have massage therapists that can help you with uh, lymphatic relief to help your body, your immune system, whenever you're dealing with disease. Specifically, inner baptism for those that are dealing with digestive disorders, especially those of the colon. I highly, highly, highly recommend the inner baptism for those that have uh, issues with constipation um, or, or just that feeling of heaviness and bloating or that you can't pass your bowel. And also energy work, Reiki work, or laying on of hands for individuals. But if you are having a digestive issue, there are some specific foods you should avoid. All dairy and meat products, such as cheese, ice cream, milk, or pizza. Why? Because that stuff kind of just sits in your stomach. Dairy products contain casein. Casein is the same ingredient on El- in Elmer's glue. If you think about Elmer's glue, even look at the icon on it. It's a cow. Why do they have a cow on the glue? You guys are picking up glue for your kids. Just take a peek at it next time because it's the same thing. We wonder why we can't poop. As far as meat, different types of meat decompose or digest at different times. Sometimes, especially if we have a sluggish system, the body doesn't digest the uh, meat very well, especially red meat. It can stay up in our system for weeks or years, depending on uh, what's going on with your system. We should also avoid fried foods, and this is nothing new. Everyone knows this. And carbonation. Carbonation especially, because if you're dealing with gas and bloating, it could just be that you are taking in too much carbonation. If that pop fizzles in the, in the bottle and then fizzles again when you pour it in the glass, and then fizzles again when you drink it. Of course, it's going to fizz inside of your belly to make you feel bloated and full. And then you also want to avoid white refined foods. That's your white sugar, your white rice, your white pasta, and any white flour product like white bread, even white table salt. If you can, use raw sugar that's usually brown, brown rice and wheat, and vegetable pasta, wheat flour, or whole grain bread. Why? Because in the body, those foods go right back to what they were at, at the beginning. So if it's a white flour product, it's going to go right back to dough inside your stomach. And then you're going to pass that, Hopefully. Whereas with the whole wheat, you actually still have the whole product. Think of an oatmeal. You still have that thinner piece of wheat in the middle. So the body identifies it and then digests it, as opposed to it being undigested food in your colon. Those that are dealing with issues may have um, their intestines may have more. Because when there are blockages and the rest of the body is still trying to push more waste through, or if there are certain areas that are slug- more sluggish than others, then you're going to get back up in, uh, in different areas. Or the ascending or, or transverse colon will fall. So here what you're looking at is the ascending colon on the left. I'm sorry, guys. 
The ascending colon on the left starts with the appendix. The small intestine comes in here. The cecum, I'm sorry, the cecum is the area here where I told you my son had his issues, that and along the intestine, the ascending colon. Next is your first term, what they call the hepatic flexure. And this is the transverse colon, which goes across from right to left, because this is the right side of your body. This is the bottom right. Most people have issues here with irritation um, because that's where our undigested food kind of dumps into. So if you don't have digested food and it's here, it's going to irritate the lining in this part of the, the uh, colon, as well as parasites also sit here. So you would sometimes have issues there. There's the first turn to the transverse colon and then the second turn, which is a splenic flexure, down to the descending colon. And then from the descending is the sigmoid, rectum, and anus. So if someone is dealing with Crohn's disease, their whole system has the ability to have ulcers from the anus to the mouth. So that includes the small intestine, the stomach, and the esophagus and the mouth. For someone who's dealing with uh, colitis, it would just involve the colon. Most people dealing with colitis have issues in the descending colon and leading towards the rectum and deal with a lot of uh, uh, diarrhea. Again, those with Crohn's would have these issues all over. So that's a healthy colon. Another great thing that if you have digestive issues you can work on is proper elimination. I have a quick little video to show you guys just to share the step and go, which is a great uh, tool to help you with proper elimination. A lot of times our problems start with something as simple as our posture. If you look on the left here, this is the anus. And our poop comes through here. But there is this puborectalis muscle that kind of holds our rectum and everything in place, like it should be here. But when we sit down, it bends, which is fine if we're seated and we're just sitting at the dinner table. But if we want to get a poop, we need to release this, mu this uh, muscle. So by using a stepping go or other product like it, you can raise your feet just ever so slightly so that you're no longer straining to get your bowel movement across. All right, so let's watch a quick little video about that. If you feel number two sitting down, you don't know squatting. Squatting has been the natural way to go since the dawn of time. The modern toilet has changed this ideal angle, and humans have suffered health problems ever since. Introducing the Step and Go. It puts your body in the proper squatting posture for better, healthier elimination. When standing or sitting, our bodies are designed to keep waist in, much like a cake in a garden hose. The Step and Go's healthy squatting angle straightens out this kink and allows for less strain and more thorough results. Using the Step and Go can help relieve hemorrhoids, straining, and allow for more complete elimination. It's just a healthier way to go. Step and Go has helped me lay off the laxatives. I definitely feel healthier. You know, Step and Go for me is a better way to go. It's more natural and more thorough. Numerous case studies show that more thorough elimination can improve your overall health. The squatting angle achieved with the step and go helps release strain and allows the digestive system to align for better, healthier results. Designed for the ideal squatting angle, it's guaranteed to work for everyone. The step and go is quality made to give you years of service and normally sells for $29.95. Order today and you'll also receive this get going and feel great booklet, both for just $19.95. And when you order, be sure to ask about discounts for additional step and go units. Try Step and Go. If you don't enjoy more energy, feel healthier, and then decide you would rather go without it, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. Remember. Okay, guys. 
So that's a great little tool to have just to help you uh, with better elimination and uh, less strain on your system. Another thing you can do is cleanse and nourish your system with a detoxifier, eliminator, and a eliminator and a parasitic. I use DEP, which is um, provided by the National the Natural uh, Healing Institute, and I use it to whenever I'm cleansing. So anytime I'm going to do a cleanse, if it's just to build my immune system or if I've maybe been eating some junk food and I need to reset my system, or if I uh, just feel that I'm not, I haven't passed enough uh, food. Why do I take it? Because there's an average to 10 to 70 pounds of undigested meat and toxins and things in our body. It kind of lays along the walls like spackle, and our poo kind of goes through it. I use it because it helps increase the peristalsis of the intestine. It helps to clean out the system, and I get it before my colonic as a prep for my colonic to prep my system to be thoroughly cleaned out because it helps to get that spackle off of the walls of the colon, which is, again, one of the reasons why some of us are sick. A colon cleanse is definitely recommended for those that are dealing with colon issues and for those who may not have colon issues. It's important to release your waste, and I have to say it twice, release waste, and release waste because I have to coin this phrase for Dr. Capera because definitely lots of us are walking around with these big old bellies because they're full of food that hasn't passed. Once you can get your system clean, then you lose weight and your, your waste reduces because you're no longer dealing with that extra waste. You also can release emotion through a colon cleanse. Water, our bodies are 75% water. This planet is 75% water. It makes only perfect sense to use water to cleanse out one of the most filthy areas of our body. Ever talk to somebody and they have that breath? You know, I don't want to say it, but they need a colon cleanse. And just the smell is just coming up and out. Got to come out some kind of way. It also helps us to release the past, but also call desire and give thanks for where we are. So if you are dealing with any of these issues, my wellness plan definitely helps you to maintain health or bring yourself back to a state of health. What does it have in it? Health assessment, a discovery consult that's worth about 99 bucks, a disease reversal guideline, so a complete A to Z blueprint that's worth about 150, herbal teas and herbal oil suggestions, weekly conferences like this one, spiritual support, a Facebook group support, and biweekly coaching session. And that's a $250 value. And then the goal plans have all of that plus more. What's in them? Well, before we get into all that, let's talk about treating versus supporting. Treating symptoms versus supporting the body. So when you go to the doctor with your digestive symptoms, whether it's, hey, my tummy hurts, or I feel bloated all the time, or I have this ulcer that won't heal, they'll definitely give you some medicine for it every single time because that's how they treat you. I have a picture here of a man with a hook through his hand. So it looks pretty painful. So I want to use this as an example as to what happens when you go to the doctor with a problem. So the guy has a hook in his hand from trying to hook a big fish. The fish got off, and the line snapped back and grabbed his hand. He gets rushed to the ER. He's immediately taken to the back. They see the hook in his hand. So it's the first thing they want to do is get the hook out, get him some antibiotics, and get him some pain medicine. After they're all done with him, the hook is out. He doesn't hurt anymore. After he heals up, he is cured, right? Okay, so that's why we go to the doctor for cures. 
But let's let's uh, change it just a little bit, and instead of that hook just being a normal hook, let that hook represent high blood pressure. So you go to the doctor. You're, it's an emergency. Your, your blood pressure is 100 and, and let's say 200 over 110. That's nearing stroke victim status. And so that's the hook. When you get to the hospital, the doctor says, hey, you got a hook in your hand. Hey, you got high blood pressure. I'm going to give you the medicine so you, you're, you don't feel your hand anymore, so you can't move your hand. That way you won't feel the hook and you'll be okay. Oh, but I'll give you some I'll give you some pain medicine so you won't feel it. And we'll put a bandage on it so nobody will see it. So that's really the effect of what happens when you have high blood pressure and you go to the doctor. Because instead of actually helping you reduce your stress or finding out what that stress is from and reducing it, they will just give you a medication for it. Or just a bandage on top of the hook. And when you take that medication, let's say it's a beta blocker. A beta blocker ends in OL. So if anybody has high blood pressure, you can look at your medications and see which one it is. And let's say metropolol. Well, we, they give you that. That one medication makes your heart not beat as hard. So it makes your heart, instead of pumping, rigorously to get your blood through your vessels. It makes it pump very lightly or hardly at all. So then you are tired. But when they take your blood pressure because your heart's not beating as heavily or as forcefully, your blood pressure is under normal limits according to that cuff. That doesn't mean that the issue is gone and that your blood pressure would normally still be high it still would be. The issues are still there. They just have told your heart to stop beating as hard. So then since your heart's not beating so hard, fluid begins to collect in your legs and ankles. That's when grandma has to have a water peel, right, because she goes to the doctor. She says, hey, I'm tired all the time, and now i got this water all over my ankles. They give her a water peel. That hook is still there. But now she's got a hook and a Band-Aid, and she can't feel her hand, and we'll put another bandage around the whole hand in. That's the water peel. And so I'm not going to continue with that, but you guys can just kind of see how that whole thing works and how grandma ends up with 10 medications across her, her kitchen table. A couple of examples I have here are um, Viagra Cialis for erectile dysfunction, for VPH, uh, bladder relaxant, and with cancer, Medication uh, attacks the damaged cell. So they give you the medication to destroy the cancer. But the normal cells are also destroyed too. And so then that gain becomes a 50-50 chance with your life. But it's okay because that's okay. That's allopathic medicine, and that's what it does. It works with the physical aspect of healing, and they work with one system at a time instead of multiple systems, knowing that we are, everything is connected. But again, not to bash them, if I got a, a real hook in my hand, I'm going to the hospital and they're going to take it out and they're going to take care of me. But if I have a medical condition that my body is maybe just not nourished properly, I'm going to go to a naturopathic practitioner to help reverse my condition by nurturing and supporting my body in all four views. Now, how do we do that? Again, I talked to you guys about some dietary guidelines that I provide that include fresh vegetables, organic, and whole food, whole grain, and good fat, herbal support. Red clover is my best buddy. I used the red clover when I was dealing with my breast cancer scare. And it was very instrumental in me shrinking my tumor. For those of you that are dealing with uh, inflammatory diseases in your colon, turmeric needs to be your best friend. Turmeric is probably the herb for anti-inflammatory activity. 
Even some hospitals are using it to treat colon cancer. So research, uh, if you don't do anything else, research different ways you can take in turmeric, from turmeric tea to turmeric milk to whatever ways you can get it into your food. The other uh, herbs that I have here are also very powerful, like Sardilandia. They call it also the cancer bush. It's also great, and they're working in Africa with uh, curing AIDS with that one. There are some herbs for healthy digestion here, too. Paragon is great for intestinal parasites. Ginger prevents fermentation. Peppermint improves digestion. Juniper cleanses the kidney. Fennel stimulates the stomach. Lemongrass is an antifungal, so it works to get rid of candida in the, in the bowel system or in the body. Anise increases blood flow, I'm sorry, bile flow from the liver, and patchouli reduces fluid re retention. And those are herbs, but you can also get them in an essential oil form. And essential oils are 10 to 10,000 times more potent than the herb by itself. So there's Daijai. It's a great oil blend that has all of those herbs that I just mentioned that can be taken daily with an enzyme and a probiotic that will support you in your wellness regimen or digestive health. There are other vitamins and minerals that I recommend. Immunopro, Super B. Super B is great. It's got all the B vitamins. And they're all in a complete food uh, capsule as opposed to some of our – we go to the, to the health food store and we grab a uh, supplement in peel form. Most of the time the body only absorbs about 10% of that peel just because it's not in a natural format. And the body doesn't completely recognize it to be food. So it will discard much of it. But these have essential oil. So they, the body recognizes it completely as an herb, as a food, and can absorb it. So vitamin C, omega gyes is another one with great fatty acids. And then there's inner de defense as well, as, long, as well as others. I also recommend Ningxia Red. Ningxia Red is an antioxidant drink. You guys heard me discuss all of those different things that we're fighting every day to protect ourselves. Ningxia Red does that quite powerfully. It's only one ounce needed per day, or but it does come in two-ounce varieties as well. It's about 100 oranges, 800 blueberries, two, 22 carrots, 11 pounds of spinach, about 60 broccoli florets, 73 strawberries, and almost 100 apples. That's all that you get in one drink. So for those that maybe don't have time to juice every day or don't have time to make a smoothie every morning, this is a great way for you to get the same, if not more, antioxidant support to support your cell. Again, that security system is all we have against disease. And for those already suffering with disease, you want your cell replication to happen in a matter where those cells come back healthy. And uh, antioxidant drink like Ning Charette or, again, getting all those fruits and vegetables in that seven to nine servings every day, if not more, will help keep your cell membrane intact. I also offer mental and emotional and spiritual support to reduce stress, there's meditation. There are specific yoga exercises that you can do for constipation and other um, digestive issues that you may be dealing with. And I also provide emotional freedom techniques, also known as tapping. I have a few plans to, pl to choose from. They all come with all of this information, with all of this goodness. And again, the gold plan just has a little more uh, hand-holding. I'm going to open up the floor for Q&A. Any questions out there today? 
Don't be shy. Rhonda. Hi. Hi. Um, this is Dr. Kapira. I want yes. to say that this has been phenomenal information. And, I mean, it was so complete and on point. Um, it, it's almost not leaving room for any questions. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, really, you've, you've covered everything. Um, it's excellent, and, and, and we'll be talking um, because it's time for me to hand over the mantle to you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank, thank you so much. This is really, really important. You know, this is where I live, and Nicole, and when you mentioned about the inner baptisms, and that's what I coined, you know, instead of just, colonics or colon hydrotherapy, it is really important. The whole digestive system, that's the seat of your emotion, it is the seat of, of dis-ease, if you will. And so, um, you know, when you hit on those points, it's like when people cleanse and detoxify, a lot of the diseases go away. But everything that you've mentioned has been on point, and I couldn't add any more to this. I mean, like, really. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. For those of you who do not know, that is Dr. Kavera. She is the uh, proprietor for the National Healing Institute and is the best colon therapist out here. And she provides mm-hmm. four-fold health plan when she's detoxing uh, your colon. You also detox the mind, the emotions, and the spirit is renewed when working with her. And you don't get that everywhere with every colon therapist. So, again, thank you for joining the call, Dr. K. I appreciate you, and I honor you. Welcome. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a question. Are your slides available on your website? Say it again. Are your slides available on the website, your PowerPoint slides? It will be, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. I have a question. Um, with the uh, with everything you explained about how um, speaking all juice, what you said, you don't have enough time to go in the day to get the nourishment that you need. Um. With that saying, this is Brenda. Now, hey, (laughs) with that, my, um, some things I can't take, I think I've mentioned it before, as fruit, the the citrus seems to bother me. Um, And some things I just drink maybe like a, it's probably not a hundred percent, but it's a the blend, and it's like I like. I had a smoothie maybe about a month ago, and I kind of liked it, but I don't have that kind of time to make that, you know. Okay, okay. Well, the new <laughs> is, is mostly wolfberry juice. Wolfberry is also known as goji berry, and so it's the antioxidant. The most power comes from that. That's the base. The citrus is there. But I don't know that it will be concentrated enough for you to, you know, have a reaction from it. It's mostly vegetables in there, too. So if you want, um, we can arrange for you to, you know, try them out. I, I'll have some samples, and I can get them to you. You know that. Oh, okay. All right, and you can see how it does for you, and if you like it, then you can get some. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Anybody else? And thank you for speaking up, Brenda. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Well, again, um, if you are having digestive issues, I am available. The price is beginning at $99. Um, if you decide to partner with me and you would like to be coached, that $99 rolls into that. It is a, a reasonable package, and you get tons of information. Um, I'm very happy to be able to share this information with you guys. Again, 
this digestive issue is close to my heart because both me and Andrew have gone through the ringer with this stuff, and we don't have to deal with that anymore. And I just want everybody to have the freedom from these diseases that we have. Um, so I'm very happy to share anything that I have. Um, one more time for questions before I end the call, though. Yes, I have, I have one more question. Is it the mm-hmm. same um, $99 for children as well? Well, I didn't hear you. Yeah. Yes, is it the same for children as well, the same price? Oh, Asaki. Asaki? Yes. Oh, hey, Asaki. Hey. <laughs> He prices the same. It's a consultation that's going to dig deep. And if I, I know what you're probably thinking. If you want to dig into those issues, uh, that you know, the direct stuff, yeah, it, it, that's definitely doable, and it'll probably help with behavior and a, a whole lot of things. So we can talk. Just call me, dear. Okay. All right. Love you. Anyone else? All right, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much for joining us here on the NES. I am thankful for your participation and your willing to share in this moment of hope and of peace. And I send that peace and hope and love with you on your journey tonight. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you.